So uh, some of the state's biggest job creators are in this room today, so I want you to address them with this next question. As governor, what will be your top three priorities in descending order on issues that you believe should matter most to the members of the Colorado Chamber? And Walker, you're first with this one. Well, in order to have a Colorado future that all of us in this room want to have, we need to have a, a strong Colorado economy. It's why uh, I was an early supporter of the federal tax legislation, uh, unlike Congressman Polis, uh, not only because uh, the, chief state, uh, the chief state economist uh, has said that uh, we could be looking at a billion dollar surplus for our budget this year, uh, not only because 73% of Coloradans are benefiting, not only because it repealed the individual mandate of the Affordable Care Act, which is the most regressive tax in uh, U.S. history, uh, but because uh, I believe that economic growth solves a lot of problems in Colorado, uh, and it creates jobs. Uh, and we need to keep uh, ec uh, Colorado's economy strong by keeping Colorado's uh, job growth strong. And Congressman Polis and I have a big difference of opinion. His support for a 2,000-foot setback for the energy industry, which he was willing to bankroll a couple years ago, would have driven 230,000 jobs out of Colorado, 100,000 jobs uh, from Latinos in our state. It would have taken away $32 billion of annual economic impact. His state-run health care system, he won't be able to find a single state to join us. This was tried in Vermont a couple years ago through a double-digit uh, payroll tax on all businesses and double-digit uh, tax increase on individuals, uh, and it will make care more expensive, uh, not less expensive. It will make lines longer. It will create a greater shortage of doctors in rural areas, uh, and it will create uh, a critical uh, problem with people that have life-threatening illnesses to get the medication they need. And now that doesn't even account for the R&D jobs that will be lost at places like UC Health. Uh, so no, I don't want to drive our healthcare system over the cliff. I think that there is a much better way that we can solve this as Coloradans together, uh, working with the docs and the agencies that are on the front lines to in increase uh, access and affordability for Coloradans and make sure uh, that Medicaid, which is we have a moral obligation to sustain, uh, is sustained in Colorado. Thank you. I just wanted to be clear, since this comes up often, the uh, single payer option that you are considering, Jared, is an option in addition to private insurance, Medicaid, and Medicare, right? Yeah, absolutely. The, okay. the current way we cover people, Medicare, Medicaid, they're, they're a linchpin of any way of achieving a universal okay. coverage. So you want to address about, yeah. top three issues? Uh, sure. So, and again, I'm going to try to focus more, uh, you know, if you notice, Walker talks more about what I don't believe rather than what he believes. I'm going to try to focus on what I believe are the top three priorities for our state. Um, and we touched on one, and that's education. So it's about how can we make sure we have a workforce that is able to thrive in the 21st century economy? How do we align the skills that we need? Uh, partnerships between community colleges and high schools through dual and concurrent enrollment programs where students can get associate's degrees while they're in high school and be able to get a job market, or if they choose to go on to a four-year university, they only need two or three years to complete, not only saving them the money, half the cost, but also half the time where they're able to get out and earn and they have skills that are mapped to jobs that we need within institutions of higher education, uh, making sure that we have a number of ways to save students money so we can improve access, moving towards open source textbooks, collaboratively sourced, the average cost of textbooks at CSU, $1,100 a year. That's on top of room, on top of board. Uh, and we can reduce that significantly as long as tie any additional funding to tuition freezes or decreases at our institutions of higher education. Second, roads and infrastructure. Um, everybody in the room uh, moves people or goods, right? Whether it's your employees getting to work or whether it's goods that you manufacture or trying to reach market. And that is becoming an impediment to the success of our business climate in Colorado. The average cost to each one of you is about $600 in lost productivity from extra wear and tear on your car uh, and extra gas because of traffic. Um, we have a plan uh, that includes an all of the above approach, which means we need to look at bus rapid transit commuting solutions, expanding rail options to connect with existing light rail infrastructure to reach the final point, lane expansion, and I've actually successfully worked to deliver federal Tiger Grant funding to the Highway 36 project as well as 25 North in Loveland and Fort Collins, and worked with uh, Representative Scott Tipton to make Highway 70 westbound all the way to Utah a high priority freight corridor, opening up additional uh, federal investment in that as well. Finally, uh, we need to continue to expand and grow markets for growing in Colorado, made in Colorado products. I've been honored to work with Casey's and others on trade. Look forward to being a trade ambassador uh, as well as an ambassador for capital to uh, attract additional investment to our great state. Thank you.